Okay. What is in progress? Okay. So text six. Just get there. Did we start this? No, we didn't. You just read the translation. That's about it. And then it was time. That was it. Okay. Nama Om Vishnu Graha Krishna Pishtaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swanti Namani Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pacharine Niva Sisha Samivari Pashtatara Satanine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Shia Dvita Kadatha Shiva Sati Gauravata Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Jaya Shri Prabhupada Ki Jaya so um, let's just read the verse again. I'll just read the translation. Uh, being situated in his original Krishna conscious position, a, a pure devotee does not identify with the body. Such a devotee should not be seen from a materialistic point of view. Indeed, one should overlook a devotee's having a body born in a low family a body with a bad complexion, a deformed body or diseased or infirm body. According to ordinary visions, such imperfections may seem prominent in the body of a pure devotee. But despite such seeming defects, the body of a pure devotee cannot be polluted. It is exactly like the waters of the Ganges, which sometimes during the rainy season are full of bubbles, foam and mud. The Ganges water do not become polluted. Those who are advanced in spiritual understanding will bathe in the Ganges without considering the condition of the water. And now I remember, yes, we spoke a little bit about this. I remember, yeah, speaking about the example of Dina Bandhu, who was uh, drinking the Yamuna yeah. water. Yeah. That, you know? Interesting how memory works. It's like little triggers, you know? Triggers things, and then you remember this and that. That's what it's like. I know it's a bit of a sidetrack. That's what I find. Sometimes I learn a series of verses together, say, say like ten verses, something like that. And um, and um, I, as long as I know the first verse, then I know I if I learn them, then I'm quite confident I'm going to be able to get to the tenth verse. Because it's like a song, you know, you learn it in the, you know, you kind of, once you start, you know, it's, it's like, um, you know, there's some sour prayers, you know, if these prayers, if you, if we have to have confidence that Krishna is going to, going to tell us what the other verses are, <laughs> you know, at some point you get that confidence, you know, if you start some sada, then the other verses will come within your mind at the right time you know but you have to spend yes. some time you have to the spend rhythm. yeah that, i mean yeah. That's, yeah just some my experience of learning like for instance learning procedures for deity worship that's why you know i have a bit of a thing when devotees are still taking a piece of paper downstairs to just go and tie after dressing for five years <laughs> Because they haven't made an effort to try and remember it. But if you make an effort, and that's how it works, once you start it, then the next thing comes to mind. Then when that's when that thing comes to mind, then the next thing comes to mind. You understand? Just some advice if you're any of you are engaged in learning procedures or you want to learn verses or like that. Anyway, that was a sidetrack. But it's so funny when uh, say when you learn words. And then all of a sudden you come up, you start from the middle. Somebody said something from the middle. It's so difficult to go back to the first line, you know? Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's one. I mean, that takes a deeper level of learning. So, for instance, if I've learned a series of five verses, um, I can't repeat the fifth one unless I go through the first four. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> I can. comes after that. That's a one level of learning. But if you keep learning it, you keep going over it, then, um, then you can pick out. The parrot fashion. Sorry? Parrot fashion, <laughs> a little bit. Parrot Sorry, fashion. What? Parrot fashion when you're repetitive, you know, when you do it yeah. so many times that it's embedded. So that's it. Then you can um, 
Yeah. Like and the verses that I learned years ago, if somebody starts it off, I can say the whole thing. Yeah. But if That's I start something. anything new, it just doesn't. Yeah. Thank you all for all that anyway now. So. Yeah, that's a good point to remember because we shouldn't expect, like if we're learning hundreds of verses or many verses, we're not always going to remember them all. But So that, that's how it works as well. Sometimes I'm reading Bhagavatam and I come across a verse I learned 15 years ago. And, um, I, and I just go over it a few times and it comes back quite easy. Then I stop and I re I refresh that verse and I go over it, and it comes it comes because I have spent time memorizing it, even if it was a few years ago, it's still there, but we just have to uncover it a bit, and you don't have to work so hard to actually memorize it. Although there are some verses that I've learned perhaps twenty five years ago which I haven't recited for twenty five years, and that takes a lot of <laughs> that takes a bit more work. Well, you completely forgot it completely. Anyway, let's get into the nectar of instruction, shall we? Hare Krishna. So, okay, we have some reader. We have devoted three hands for three devotees a hand up. Uh, Sahachari Mother has a hand up. You can begin. Yeah. Purport. Suddha Bhakti, the activity of the soul, proper in other words, engagement in the transcendental loving service of the Lord is performed in a liberated condition. In the Bhagavad Gita 14.26, it is stated, Mamam Chaya Vyabhicharena Bhakti Yogena Sevate Sagunan Samatitya Yaitan Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpate. One who engages in devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances, at once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of Brahman. Avya Bicharina Bhakti means unalloyed devotion. A person engaged in devotional service must be free from material motives. In this Krishna conscious movement, one's consciousness must be changed. If consciousness is aimed towards material enjoyment, it is material consciousness. And if it is aimed towards serving Krishna, it is Krishna consciousness. A surrendered soul serves Krishna without material considerations. Anyabilasha Sunyam, Janma Karmadi Anavritam, unalloyed devotional service, which is transcendental to such activities of the mind and body as nana, mental speculation, and karma, fruitative work, is called pure bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is the proper activity of the soul, and one actually engages in unalloyed, uncontaminated devotional service. He is already liberated. Sagunan. Samaiti, Samaitit Yaitan. Krishna's devotee is not subjected to material conditions, even though his bodily features may appear materially conditioned. One should therefore not see a pure devotee from a materialistic point of view, unless one is actually a devotee. He cannot see another devotee perfectly. As explained in the pre previous verse, there are three types of devotees, Kanishtadikari, Madhyama Adhikari and Uttama Adhikari. The Kanishta Adhikari cannot distinguish between a devotee and a non-devotee. He is simply concerned with worshipping the deity in the temple. A Madhyama Adhikari, however, can distinguish between the devotee and non-devotee, as well as between the devotee and the Lord. Thus, he treats the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the devotee and the non-devotee in different ways. That's why Paul's no there. One... Let's just pause there. Yeah. Um... Any reflections on this or questions? Prabhu, could you just expand on that Krishna's devotee is not subjected to material condition, even though his body, that bit, um, uh, if you could just expand something on that? Yeah. Um, where was that? Is that the beginning? I'll just... it, it's the same para above. You know where it's Saguna, whatever that sounds like. Saguna Samiti Yatam Brahma Kalpate. Krishna's devotee is not subject to material conditions, even though his bodily features may appear to be materially conditioned. Yeah, that's so. Uh, so, what does yeah, that so mean? Yeah, for to understand this, like we see devotees, like our respective senior devotees. Um, 
they do age, but not like the gross materialist. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, but they still, they still do age, but because of their uh, yeah. lifestyle, yeah, they look a lot younger than what generally materialistic people look yeah. at the same age. So they are subject to, in that sense, to to uh, material conditions, but it doesn't have any relevant. It doesn't have any relevance to their spiritual standing. Yeah, it's uh, inconsequential, inconsequential to yeah. their Krishna consciousness. Yeah. yeah, so they are not within their mind, their heart. They are not subjected to the material conditions, even of their own body. Yeah. They are always in a transcendental position. And Srila Prabhupada exemplified that even when he was translating Shima Bhagavatam at the last stages of his life. And he was very, um, what's the word? He was the word they use in medical terms for when you're, all your faculties are working, all your senses, you're, you're aware. Prabhupada was aware, fully aware. So, so he wasn't affected by his material body. So, so a devotee may, as this verse is describing, or may be diseased or may be infirm in many different ways, but um, they are not, yeah, so that would be called um, judging devotees externally, and then that would be an offence. Yeah. Just like some devotees, uh, maybe they're, maybe, Maybe they're sudras, the vaishyas, or the chatriyas, or the brahmanas. Maybe so. It's an offence to call a vaishnava a. You are a a sudra vaishnava. You are a because <laughs> yeah. vaishnava is above all um, all these material designations. Yeah. So they're not affected. Thank you, Baba. Okay. Not, yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhu, could you just explain yeah. the three devotees, Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, and Uttama Adhikari? Could yeah, that's just... been a subject. Um, yeah, carry on. Sorry, uh, yeah, so um, could you just kind of like explain it just slightly a little bit deeper, like who is a Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari? Uh, well, Papa gives some explanation here, um, and it's a subject which I think perhaps some of us are quite familiar with. In our readings of both Sudha Bhakti Tantamani and Sankarpa Kumudi. But Kanishta um, is a beginner. Beginner. A Kanishta is someone whose faith is pliable. Their faith is very weak. Right. Yeah, the faith is very weak. And there's just yesterday I was reading some of the uh, symptoms of a Kanishta, which Prabhupada refers to here, that they only give or they give great respect to the Lord within the temple, but they do not how they do not know how to interact with others, uh -huh. devotees or otherwise. So they're very respectful before the deity, mm -hmm. but they don't understand that that, that the, the deity is situated in, in uh, everyone's heart. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they're prone to make offenses. And also Prabhupada says in one place they are more or less useless for for practical preaching. <laughs> okay. Because of the understanding is not so strong. Yeah. So um, we're encouraged not to stay there. Yeah. And Madhya Madhikari, there's a verse um, which describes that this is in the eleventh canto of the Shima Bhagavatam. The Navo Yogendras speak about these different classifications of devotees. Yeah. And Majjama is someone who, who makes friendship with the devotees of the Lord, expresses love, exchanges with the devotees. And they, they make distinctions and they avoid envious people for their own benefit, yeah, for the envious person's benefit. So they make distinctions, the Majjama Dikari. They have great friendship with the devotees. And, they're, and because they make distinctions between the devotees and the non-devotees, they are engaged in practical preaching work, mm. Ajamas. Yeah. Then Uttama Adhikari, he's the one whose uh, faith is like Majam, their faith is very um, 
is 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 fixed. So even if um, even if some uh, charismatic person may seemingly um, defeat them in logic and argument, mm -hmm. the imaginary carry because their faith is deep will not um, budge. <laughs> they, they won't be influenced. Yeah, they, they will not be influenced where a Kanishta might be. So their faith is a lot deeper. Then the automatic carry is someone who has realized all the imports of, of the Sastra. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's been revealed in, in a very deep way. And they, um, and they see everyone and everything as perfectly being conducted by the Lord. So the automatic carry sees everyone as a devotee and they see Krishna's manifestation of his energies everywhere. So all done. Thank you, Prabhu. That's great. Okay. Yeah, so Prabhupada here chooses to tell us about pure devotional service. Yeah. Abhyapacharini Bhakti. Yeah. Prabhu, could you, and then uh, the word that you just used, that Bhakti, unalloyed uh, devotion. Could you yeah. just expand a little bit there? In Krishna conscious movement, one conscience must be changed. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it has, it has to be, yeah, that's the whole, there's a ch that chapter in the Shema Bhagavatam, it's called the change of heart yeah. in, uh, in the first canto. So the idea there should be, there is transformation. Yeah, so changing from, from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness. Yeah, that's why it must be changed. Yeah, so we must come to the level of unalloyed devotion and he said is Sudha Bhakti you mentioned yeah Sudha Bhakti like Sudha Bhakti Chintamani yeah. Prabhupada used the word Sudha Bhakti so, so then he defines what is that Avyabhicharini Bhakti it's the same thing Avyabhicharini Bhakti is the same as um, Sudha Bhakti different descriptions of pure devotional service Kevala Bhakti is another word that's used same thing. Kevala means one pointed. Avyapacharani, as far as I understand, it means there is, like it says here, there, would, there is no other motive. The, uh, the motive is devotion. So it's unalloyed devotion. Yeah, it says here, it says here, proper, it must be free from, from, from material motives. So there's no, um, there's no mixture. What's the word for mixture in Sanskrit? How, how does that transcend into what the service that we do? How does that, does that mean, I mean, it clearly says fruit of work and all that, which I understand, but when we go for service, we should be unalloyed devotion. This is what we're doing it for Krishna. That's, that's, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, we're not, um, we are doing it because of the affection and to one degree or another, the affection and appreciation and love that we have for Krishna. There is no other purpose no. for engaging that, you know, so it's not for fame. It's no. not for adoration. It's not for position. It's not for any material remuneration. It's because Krishna is so wonderful, <laughs> you know, and so we're inspired by that to actually serve him. He yep. is Prabhu. Yesterday it took us two and a half hours to get to, to the temple for service in the evening. Oh, because there was a strike, wasn't it? Yes. No, but um, um, one of uh, Ladini's friends, she drove us there. And it was oh, really, really bad. I mean, we got oh. there about 10 to 8. And we were just saying, what have you got in store for us? And of course, when I went there, Vimla Prabhu had already changed uh, JBS and Ladini just had to put the crowns in. But for me, Gornita and Giri were waiting there. And mm -hmm. it was just amazing. Waiting. It was just, I mean, I yeah, couldn't I'm, believe it. I'm, I'm sure they appreciated the, the endeavors it took you to get there. That's and exactly uh, what we were talking about in the car. We said, at least we're trying. Krishna, the endeavor is there, but we got there. 
and yeah. we managed to do some service. It was wonderful. Yeah, I'm sure just smiled when you finally <laughs> made it on water. Yeah, so that's the reason that we despite. So that's the mood that is we're just doing it to please Krishna. So Prabhupada's getting into it here. He's explaining the verse from the nectar of devotion as well. And the Abhilas of the Samyam. Gana Kamar and Abhutam. Anukul Yena Krishna Silana Bhakti Uttama. So that's a big discussion, but Prabhupada is explaining what is a devotee, what is an unalloyed devotee, and how we should see them, even if they happen to be some oddly defects. Yeah. Right, should we um, go on? Let's let um, Lavanga Latika, you like to read, Mama? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, we're starting at No One Should. That's correct, yes. yes. Okay. No one should criticize the bodily defects of a pure devotee. If there are such defects, they should be overlooked. What should be taken into account is the spiritual master's main business, which is devotional service pure service to the Supreme Lord, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 930. Even if a devotee sometimes seems to engage in abominable activities, he should be considered a sadhu, a saintly person because his actual identity is that of one engaged in this loving service of the Lord. In other words, he is not to be considered an ordinary human being. Even though pure devotee may not be born in a Brahmana or Goswami family, if he is engaged in the service of the Lord, he should not be neglected. In actuality, there cannot be a family of Goswamis based on material considerations, past or hereditary, heredity. The Goswami title is actually the monopoly of the pure devotees. Thus, we speak of the six Goswamis headed by Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami had practically become Mohammedans and had therefore changed their names to Deb, Debira Kausa and Sakara Mamika. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself made them Goswamis. Therefore, the Goswami title is not hereditary. The word Goswami refers to one who can control his senses, who is a master of the senses. A devotee is not controlled by the senses, but is the controller of the senses. Consequently, he should, not, he should be called a Swami or Goswami, even though he may not be born in a Goswami family. According to this formula, the Goswamis who are descendants of Sri Nityananda Prabhu and Sri Advaita Prabhu are certainly devotees. But devotees coming from other families should not be discriminated against. Indeed, whether the devotees come from a family of previous acharyas or from an ordinary family, they should be treated equally. One should not think, oh, here is a European Goswami and discriminate against him. Nor should one think, here is a Nityananda Vansa Vansa Goswami. There is an undercurrent of protest against our awarding the title Goswami to the European Vaishnavas of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Sometimes people flatly tell the European devotees that their sannyas or title of Goswami is not bona fide. However, according to the statements of Shilwip Goswami in this verse, a European Goswami and the Goswami and family of Acharyas are non-different. Okay, perhaps we'll pause there. Um, any uh, questions on this or reflections? Uh, Krishna Prabhu, just to comment, yes. in my book it says all American Goswami. Labangala Vatika read as European Goswami, I heard. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, mine says yeah. American too, but I yeah. think he, he meant Western. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, so might be some little things like that. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I don't know. I was too not sure to bring it up, but I think I will. Um, unfortunately, well, let's just begin here. Um, actually, um, we discussed some of this subject when we spoke about the upper sampradayas, remember? The family of the Nichananda Vamsa. Yeah. Who, 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 yeah, who, who consider themselves the uh, only ones fit to give Diksha initiation. And, um, but Prabhupada is quite charitable to them here, 
he mentions that they are certainly devotees, but devotees coming from other families should not be discriminated against. Um, unfortunately, um, um, sometimes there is discrimination. I can, um, I'm trying to how to how to explain it, how to put it, but sometimes there had a few years ago, two or three years ago, I became aware of something I wasn't aware of before, where sometimes um, the Western devotees, there's sometimes for the neophyte, for the young devotees who uh, join Mayapur in Bengal, sometimes they have discrimination against Western devotees. This will be not mature devotees, the, the, you know. Um, Sometimes, because they, cause, you know, they come from India. Sometimes there's discrimination there. I remember one devotee um, who was at our temple for some time, and he came from Bengal. He came from West Bengal, and um, just in casual conversation, we were speaking about, or I heard about devotees, and um, it was concluded that you know this de this devotee um, wasn't born in a family of devotees. So he was referred to as just an ordinary devotee. <laughs> so you understand, he's just an ordinary devotee, not like us who were born in, you know, born in West Bengal. You know, so so unfortunately, it's not so prominent, I don't think, but it is there. Um, it, it is there, um, unfortunately, for perhaps younger, immature devotees, there may be some discrimination. Because sometimes, uh, the, uh, what happens is the um, devotees to join in Bengal, they come from um, simple villages, simple village situation. And I mean, you know, a very, very simple living in the mud or, you know, a very simple house in a village with cows. And they see the American devotees come or the European devotees come with laptops, <laughs> eye watches and, you know, buying things. You know things like that so sometimes there's a bit of friction there but anyway let's perhaps that's enough of that <laughs> but it is there unfortunately so there should be no discrimination uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. yes i just thought something uh, we could say because this morning i heard subhag maharaj was saying we were looking at uh, this is 50 years ago when Mayapur was building up, we were thinking how these American devotees, these devotees, they can't, they, they can't walk like barefoot even, how they are going to do everything here. And yeah. oh, they have been, they did more than us, he was saying, you know, uh, it's only very few, um, uh, we couldn't see bra like our bodies too much. We only saw white there. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, so, you know, so, and the point is, I think the main yeah. point is that devotees shouldn't be discriminated against according to what family they may come or, or, or not come from. Um, yeah. And um, Prabhupada quotes Apichet Sudhavacharo. This is a well known verse, which often is quite a bit of discussion. Because um, even if devotee commits the most bondable acts, if he's still he's still engaged in the process of devotion and service, he is not to be considered to be fallen. He's still not to be considered an ordinary human being, because he's he's because he remains on the path. Yeah. All right. So anything else from here? So we shouldn't criticize devotees because of subtly or grossly. You know, we shouldn't subtly have any discrimination against the Vaishnav. Like, um, uh, Anna Majidi, um, what's the name of your um, spiritual master you're aspiring for? You still there, Anna? Yes, yes, I am. Sorry. Uh, what's I'm... the name of your guru? Your Bhaktivaka was for me. Yeah, and he's only got one leg. Yes. Yeah, so. And it doesn't seem to matter. <laughs> Yeah, he's only got one leg. So he's doing really well. He's doing much better than most people with two legs. Yeah. So there's an example <laughs> of a of, of a great soul, and someone may see him and think, ah, oh, he's a you know, they might be discriminating, cripple or whatever. I mean, it's a big thing today. Um, it's 
modern society is really trying to um, get rid of any discrimination at all. You know, what's, what's it all Black Lives Matter and things like that. You know, so we shouldn't we shouldn't feel any any in any way discriminates against the devotees. So there's the example of Raghava Maharaj, who's a great great pure pure-hearted soul, great pure devotee. He's got also, one he, he, he lost his leg def defending deities, yeah. so that's yeah. even uh, greater. Yeah, he yeah. got his leg blown off by a bomb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some... when everybody yeah. was hiding. Yeah, mm. so, and also there's, the, also, um, do you know um, Chechanya Churan? Oh, yeah. He's a very well popular, popular speaker, mainly in the, India, but he preaches a lot in the West as well. America. Oh, in the United States. Oh, he's one of the he's one of my favorites because I'm also yeah. he's really a really wonderful devotee, and um, and I just used to see him like they call it um, uh, what they call it. You just see it because he gives class and just see his head and his shoulders, like mm. you see me, you know. So I was listening to him for a couple of years, and then one day I I saw a um, video of him with crutches walking and he's walking with you know he's like he's got a severe handicap but i never knew that because i just saw him and um so that should not change my of course because i heard even if you know, i heard so much i have been hearing from him so that guy someone said gave me more respect for him because he came from he obviously come from a very really challenged uh, background because he was born like that, you know. He was born. I forget what it's called. What he has, but he has I think polio. I think. I think he's yeah. suffered polio. I think. Okay, is that it? Yeah. But anyway, so there's another example of a devotee whose whose body is um, from a material point of view up to scratch, <laughs> but he's uh, but he's a uh, good that doesn't stop the diffusion of his pure devotion yeah so we should be careful we shouldn't be shouldn't be careful that there's not no uh, subtle and as i mentioned sometimes in our iscon society unfortunately sometimes this type of thing rears its head i think what happened was he explained his whole story one day i think he actually got it it was a bad vaccine he had oh, and he, okay. mm. yeah yeah he was not born that way he was okay really? yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. He, in between, like, uh, and he said with this, that only he started this daily Gita quotes. Yeah. He said, I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything. And that is when he started this daily. He said, my bad uh, fortune brought me good fortune. He yeah, bad fortune me great fortune. Yeah. 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 And yeah. he also very well materially. I think he, you know, he was very good at school. Yeah. Um, his whole story one time and that thing and he you know he was making good material advancement as well um, yeah so i i uh, never knew that detail it makes him even more glorious you know that he's overcome it is, yeah. such reversals in even his by his mercy i uh, once i was able to serve him and went to the airport and then how how he's waiting his books and if he he carries so much even with that how he brings books everything and every somebody else he will wait until somebody brings his stuff to him yeah. very patiently very calm yeah. yeah so yeah so here's so that's why Prabhupada also he's uh, educating others as well is that Prabhupada indirectly perhaps you might say it forever on but those from India those they should not discriminate against Western Vaishnavas. And that was very, because yeah, because that's an offense. Yeah, one time I was in a holy place, so I won't mention it, I mentioned it some time ago. I, you know, I had I had to take an item back to this shop and he and he just wouldn't exchange it, this shopkeeper. You know, normally in the West they don't think twice. No, you take something back and you just get the money back and get the receipt. This person wouldn't do it. He was in a bad mood. He refused to do it. Then he called me a uh, malecha. Called malech. He said, "You malech." <laughs> I was dressing dodi and everything, and I wasn't having. I was. 
So I can say there is some discrimination, uh, some discrimination against Western devotees, Western persons. You know, they're malicious. So <laughs> anyway, that's we shouldn't. Have, so Rupa Goswami is telling us this five hundred years ago. There should be no discrimination. Even on a material platform, we shouldn't discriminate, isn't it? You know? Although there's different people in society have uh, different roles, yeah. but, we should, but we should be respectful mm -hmm. to everyone, whether they're cleaning the drains or cleaning the yeah. toilets. So yeah. We should have great respect, great respect for them as part and parcels of Krishna. Yeah. So the Prabhupada speaks on the, his video. We are the United Nations because we don't discriminate. Yeah. And no discrimination. Just like we have some Yassis from Africa, you know. And sometimes they're discriminated against from the higher Indian classes, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Should we read a bit more? Mm. Um, who's got the hand up? Um, Monica, no, would you like to continue reading? Yes. On the other hand, a devotee who has attained the title of Goswami but is not born of a Brahmana father or, or of a Goswami in the family of Nityananda or Advaita Prabhu should not be artificially puffed up by thinking that he has become a Goswami. He should always remember that as soon as he becomes materially puffed up, he immediately falls down. This oh. Krishna this, this, this Krishna consciousness movement is a transcendental science and there is no room for jealousy. This movement is, is meant for the Parahamsa who are completely free from all jealousy. One should not be jealous whether he is born in a family of Goswamis or has the title of Goswami awarded to him. As soon as anyone becomes envious, he falls from the platform of Parahamsa. If we consider the bodily defects of a Vaishnava, we should understand that we are committing an offense at the lotus feet of the Vaishnava. As offense at the lotus feet of a Vaishnava is, a very, ser is very serious. Indeed, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has described this offense as Hati Mata, the mad elephant offense. A mad elephant can create a disaster especially when it enters into a nicely trimmed garden. One should therefore be very careful not to commit any offense against a Vaishnava. Every devotee should, should be ready to take instructions from a super Vaishnava and a superior Vaishnava must be ready to help an inferior Vaishnava in all respects. One is a superior or inferior according to his spiritual development in Krishna consciousness. One is forbidden to observe the activities of a pure Vaishnava from a material point of view. For this neophyte, especially considering a pure devotee from a material point of view is very injurious. One should therefore avoid observing a pure devotee externally, but should try to see the internal features and understand how he's engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord in this way. One can avoid seeing the pure devotee from a material point of view, and thus one can gradually become a purified devotee himself. Okay, perhaps we'll stop there. There's a few hands up to read, so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, so Prabhupada further is commenting on this. Um, Prabhupada here, as soon as one, where was it? As soon as, soon as one becomes proud, at that point, one falls down. Doesn't take like two weeks or a week <laughs> or a few days. That is a fallen state. The conciliars, you know, but where did he say that? Yeah, one, he said in the first paragraph. Um, yeah, he says there's no room for jealousy. This movement is meant for Paramahamsa, so completely free of all jealousy. So that was a very important point because when the movement first started, you know, there's lots of activity to do. There's lots of, uh, there's, there's lots to accomplish. And all those, they're all new to Krishna consciousness, two, three years, and they're coming from a materialistic point of view. 
So some of the, sometimes that will come up. Some devotees will feel envious because of the achievements of others. So Prabhupada would have to preach, you know. And, and the classic example they would give of free of envy is, um, is the gopis. You know, envy is conspicuous by its absence in the, spirit, in the spiritual world. So we should be happy to see the achievement of others. We shouldn't be envious. Yeah, I remember some Sankirtan stories where one, where one devotee, in, in order to make sure that he distributed more books than the other devotee, then he sabotaged his car. He burst his tires. <laughs> so he couldn't get to the Sankirtan spot. <laughs> so he could distribute more books. That's the wrong idea. You know. Anyway, any uh, comments on this or questions or observations? We have to be free of all jealousy. But what is, um, one is forbidden to observe the activities of pure Vaishnava from a material point of view? What does that mean? Um, okay. Where is it? I'd like to see it, Otham. Where is that in the first paragraph? It's the paragraph we just finished. It's at okay. uh, the middle. One is forbidden to observe the activities. Yeah, one is forbidden to observe the activities of pure devotee from a material point of view. Yeah, well, that's, a, well, that's an instruction here. That's an instruction that Prabhupada's giving. Say, for example, let's try and think of an example. Um, yeah, like, for example, like, Prabhupada himself, yeah. um, he was engaged when he was living in Vrindavan. He was going to and from, where is it, Kolkata, or going to different areas to get his, to try and print the Shema Bhagavatam or the Back to Godhead magazine. Mm -hmm. This is a right example. So someone may see him just engage in material activities, but actually no. Oh, okay. What he's doing is completely, um, is completely purified because it's service to Krishna. That's Chandra, like, you was going to say something there, and I cut you off. Sorry. So I was thinking of when Bhakti Siddhanta were travel, were dressed well, and traveled in car, good cars, and like that people would like not realize what the yeah. special personality is, and then you know criticize. But yeah. his outlook is different. I mean, he's not the body; he's like doing it for Krishna, and yeah. Um, Using everything in Krishna's service, same like Prabhupada. Why are you, why are you using type? Why are you using typewriter? Why are you using flying by planes? Just like that, you know. Yeah. See, the tendency of materialists is to see devotees with the same lens as they what as what they see everyone else. You know, to see them from a materialistic point of view. Thank you, Prabhupada. Yeah, like um, they see devotees collecting money on the street and. They, you know, convinced that they're collecting money for you know for themselves. So I think I think I think what Prabhupada is indicating here is that one shouldn't um, see a Vaishnava from his position in uh, social society. He's transcendental. It's not like you know ultimately the devotee is transcendental. We um, regardless of what ashram he may be in or or may not be in, one shouldn't judge him according to his position, so-called. Because yeah. actually he's in a transcendental position, actually. Thank and Prabhupada makes a point here, it's very injurious if you see that. It can be a great, great impediment, yeah, because it, it's actually an offence. There's a big story in Chaitanya Chaitanya Mita. Um, Gadadar pro, uh, took initiation from who was it? Pundarika uh, Vidyanidhi. Yeah, that's And the when they went there and saw him in an opulent sitting, uh, smoking that hookah thing, and that he sort of looked at it in a different light, yeah. till when Prabhu started reading a slok, and then, you know, he realized yeah. what a special person he is. Yeah, that's a favorite story. It's like, that's a favorite story that devotees love to tell. Um, yeah. It's quite a dramatic story. So there's a very nice example. So Kadata had felt very much uh, repentant 
and he took initiation from um, from him for yeah. Um, yeah felt so bad yeah really. but he's a rishibanu in krishna lila yeah so um same time uh let's go the other direction that we would you know we do have to have a sense of in of of intelligent discrimination you know um if a devotee say is going to the pub and going to <laughs> things like that and drinking alcohol then we should apply some discrimination yes you know that some, that something's gone wrong here <laughs> he yeah. shouldn't be doing that <laughs> You know what I mean? We shouldn't. Oh, he might be like Pundrek Vijanidi. <laughs> yeah, so I, he's, you know, he's smoking cannabis. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, sometimes I won't give details. Sometimes you've had, perhaps the world would be started. And unfortunately, one devotee, some, I don't know if, you know, it gets quite intense, you know. So this devotee was, what he was doing when this service was getting a bit intense. He will go upstairs to, to smoke some marijuana. <laughs> in his kids, um, uh, in in his kids and goes west to see. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So um, that's Bad. so we should. You know, so if, so if you see that type of thing, we shouldn't think. Oh, it must be Pundra, Must be like Pundrak Virginidi. It's, anyway, it's like, going in it's like one, of, one of our trips. I was with Tundavali and I'm really dying for some something strong to drink and that coffee was obviously the thing and um yeah it's one off it's a don't do it again though so i had a cup of coffee because i needed it so badly you needed caffeine hit yeah <laughs> i did it <laughs> yeah yeah so um you just read this clock of peace at sudracharo <laughs> sorry i tend to use that sometimes no, I mean, I tend to use that sometimes. <laughs> oh, okay, that's all right. Yeah. Then. <laughs> now this, um, this, this purple is quite small, actually. I'm just scrolling down. Um, what's the time? 20 past. Perhaps let's have Nitai Mata. You like to read? You can yeah, yes, finish, yes, the, uh, finish this purple. Yeah, is it those who think? Is it correct that this? I think so, yeah. Yeah, Karen. those who think that Krishna consciousness is limited. To a certain section of people, a certain section of devotees, or a certain tract of land are generally prone to see the external features of a devotee. Such neophytes are unable to appreciate the exalted service of the advanced devotee trying to bring the Mahabhagavata to their platform. We experience such difficulty in propagating Krishna consciousness all over the world. Unfortunately, we are surrounded by God brothers who do not appreciate the extraordinary activities of spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. They simply try to bring us to their platform and they try to criticize us in every respect. We very much regret their naive activities and poor fund of knowledge and empowered person who is actually engaged in the condition in the confidential service of the Lord should not be treated as an ordinary human being. For it is stated that unless one is empowered by Krishna, one cannot spread the Krishna conscious movement all over the world. You can finish. Okay, Next. thank you. When one thus criticizes a pure devotee, he commits an offense, Vaishnava Parat, that is very obstructive and dangerous for those who desire to advance in Krishna consciousness, a person cannot derive any spiritual benefit when he offends the lotus feet of a Vaishnava. Everyone should therefore be very careful not to be jealous of the empowered Vaishnava or a Suddha Vaishnava. It is also an offense to consider an empowered Vaishnava an object of disciplinary action. It is offense to try to give him uh, advice or to correct him. One can distinguish between the infant Vaishnava and an advanced Vaishnava by their activity. The advanced Vaishnava is always situated as a spiritual master and the infant is always considered his disciple. The spiritual master must not be subjected to the advice of a disciple, nor should be a spiritual master be obliged to take instruction from those 
who are not his disciples. This is the sum and substance of Srila Rupa Goswami's advice in the sixth uh, verse. Mm. Oh, this is very this something very deep, heavy as well. Yeah. Mm. Any particular questions on this? Yes, Prabhu. Sometimes I'm thinking when we when we try to correct. Uh, Prabhu, it is very difficult to understand <laughs> uh, who is in these platforms. So, so in that way, even sometimes we think, oh, may, maybe this is a better way to do than that. So shouldn't we say anything? Because we don't know who is on well, I'm talking myself. Well, well, the just, safe, well, the safe ground to be on is just yeah. to have the culture of respect for everyone. Yeah. Just, 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 just be respectful to everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. to never consider ourselves, because we consider ourselves uh, lower than the straw on the street. That's kind of the safe platform to yeah. be. Rather yeah. than trying to judge who is on this level, who is on that level. We, yeah. um, we may not be able to tell because of our own disqualification. So we should generally be respectful to everyone. And Prabhupada is actually here, he's actually speaking some history from his own personal experience. So interesting because Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur gave initiation to the, from to um, persons from all castes, and it was the caste of Swamis who would criticize Bhakti Siddhanta. So in other words, he would he would give sannyas to non Brahmins, for example. So he was, as we know, he was criticized by um, strongly criticized by the ghost by the caste of Swamis. But then when uh, when Prabhupada was fantastically successful in preaching in the West, and when he started giving sannyas to Westerners, even Prabhupada's own god brothers, they could not accommodate that, some of them. And they criticized Prabhupada for that. And that's what Prabhupada is referring to here, his own personal experience. Where is it? Um, um, unfortunately, we are surrounded by neophyte god brothers. Who do not appreciate the extraordinary activities of spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. So Prabhupada, interesting Prabhupada's mood here, which I'll mention a little bit in, a, in, in regards to the next paragraph, but he's stepping back and he's, um, ob, he's objectively concluding that he has been empowered by his spiritual master. Yeah, and then he, from that position, would want a certain. It's only right that his god brothers give respect for that, but some of them wouldn't. Like as there was one incident, for example, where um, a letter was written about um, for from 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 one of his god brothers about the preaching of. I forget the context, but it. But Prabhupada's, but in this letter, which is describing some of the activities of the Gaudiya Ma, there was no mention, not no mention of the success that Prabhupada had had in the West. It just wasn't mentioned. So Prabhupada took took uh, took issue to that, not because he was expecting respect, but from they from from their side, it's only they should respect that. That level of achievement. You can imagine if the Gopal has done it with me, his Prabhupada has gone to the West. He's initiated thousands of disciples. He's created a worldwide movement of uh, Vaishnavas, and um, and some of his Gopal wouldn't even recognize it. What do they call it? They call it, um, what's that? Call it, um, defaming by someone by faint praise. You heard that word? Or you don't give someone enough praise to what they're actually entitled to. So that, in one sense, is actually speaking badly against them. Yeah. And Prabhupada here, and so it's in history, 
it's a history they're staring history now how he's got some of his god brothers would relate to Prabhupada after his success some of them were just out and out envious and some of them yeah and here Prabhupada also he mentions here um yeah down in this paragraph for Papa is saying here uh, everyone should therefore be very careful not to be jealous of an empowered Vaishnava or Sudha Vaishnava. So Prabhupada was that empowered Vaishnava. So so objectively, there should be some should have been some recognition for that from from others. Instead, they will be jealous and pass critical comments. And Prabhupada says here. Um, it is also an offense to consider an empowered Vaishnava. So Prabhupada, I mean, as you could comment, but Prabhupada is speaking about himself. Not completely, but he's an example of an empowered Vaishnava. It is, is an offense to consider an empowered Vaishnava an object of disciplinary action. So that's an actually incident happened where Prabhupada's god brothers took issue to Prabhupada using the name Prabhupada. You've heard of this history? And so a group of them, they all got together to come and see and correct and chastise Prabhupada for using the title Prabhupada. You know? And um, they came and um, he asked his disciples to leave the room. And um, anyway, they was complaining to Prabhupada. But Prabhupada, he's a approached... Wasn't that time when Bhakti Chu Maharaj put the tape on? Yeah, put the uh, tape on. Tape on, yeah. And then they went yeah. out. Yeah. So you know the history where um, yes. Prabhupada, yes. I think he asked for a letterhead and he's more or less, he was said, well, it's too late now. <laughs> it's all, <laughs> too late. What could I do? He said he showed a letterhead. It's too there, you know. But um, Amazing. Amazing, yeah. yeah. So that's, I think I would say, I might be mistaken, but Prabhupada is referring to that, to uh, perhaps other, uh, perhaps other situations, other similar instances also happen, but it is an offense to try and advise him or, or, or correct him. One can distinguish between a neophyte Vaishnava and an advanced Vaishnava by their activities. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing, how Prabhupada is such an advanced devotee, could like like we studying, he could see the actions of his god brothers and yeah. how much envy, jealousy, yeah, yeah. you know, all that yeah. is in there. And because he's about all that, he could see the action. You know yeah. how when we ask questions to spiritual masters or gurus, they can see where you come in. They know from it, yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, what what you what the answer to kind of in a way where you're coming from. So yeah, right. yeah. I'm just thinking mm -hmm. that Prabhupada knew exactly what these, these people yeah. are doing, these God brothers are doing, or you know, yeah. not giving him credit. He didn't want credit, but no. Um, well, no, he didn't know. want credit for himself, but but just the principle should be yeah, there. The principle if, someone, of it, yeah. if someone's empowered and they're spreading Krishna consciousness in a phenomenal way, to not even give any credit to that. To not even, you know, to not even praise him for that. At least accept it, accept yeah. it, acceptance. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, anyway. And I think also that uh, for the other, for he, him, he didn't, he didn't want it, but for others to bring up to that higher standard to appreciate a senior yeah. devotee or yeah. somebody who's done something, just you know. <laughs> Not yeah. for Prabhupada, he didn't want it, but Just for the them to realize principle, yes. Someone's yes. empowered to such a degree. Like appreciate even, appreciate him really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even now, um, when you hear Gaudiya Vaishnavas speak, um, some they will speak about Prabhupada as if he's just another guru. Yes. They they, 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 they yeah they don't speak of him in the same way that Iskon devotees speak of Prabhupada. I think like we have got so much respect, and I think like oh, yeah. even like when when he was in India, he used to look these devotees to give my life for them. You, you know, everybody he was saying to his god brothers, you know, accepting yeah. that yeah, and they were he was so much praising his disciples so much. You yeah, know? yeah. 
And I'm sorry to say that even I think like they must be, you know, these old devotees are much better than Indian devotees because the way he gave respect to Prabhupada's amazing. It was really yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's gone half past um, and I've got another thing happening at six. So we better stop Thank there. You so much. Nice discussion. So next week, let's just have a little peek at text seven. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. 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 Thank you.